Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your first day at Build. Uh, my name is Michaela Hutchinson. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio for Mac and Xamarin Platform teams. And I'm here to tell you about all of the exciting new features in Visual Studio for Mac. So let's get a quick show of hands. Which of, uh, who among you have used Visual Studio for Mac? OK, that's, that's a lot. Um, I noticed a few people didn't, though. So um, we'll get a quick recap of what it is. So it is a modern .NET IDE for the Mac that has a native Mac feel. So if you're using a Mac, that's because you want, your app, you want to use a Mac and get the Mac experience. So we give you the Mac experience, but for developing .NET code, um, C Sharp and F Sharp. It supports uh, mobile through Xamarin. It supports web through ASP.NET Core, uh, cloud through Azure Functions, and games through Unity. So we launched this uh, at build of last year. So it's been, it's been one year. It's a year old. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of incredible to think that it's been there for a year now. And we've made um, five updates since we launched it. Uh, just this morning, we launched uh, 7.5 and also the 7.6 preview. And uh, as I go through through my presentation, I will call out some of the features from the latest releases. Uh, but I'm also going to cover the entire range since build of last year uh, to show you all of the things that we've been working on and kind of the direction that it's going. So I'm going to start out with web, with the ASP.NET Core workload. Uh, so at build of last year, we shipped .NET Core to preview support. Um, that went uh, RTW uh, over the summer. Um, in today's 7.5 release, we have uh, support for the .NET Core 2.1 release candidate. So if you install that, uh, you'll get that as an option in your file new project templates. Uh, we have support for various features of that. So if you're, um, so when you first create and run a project, we'll uh, install the HTTP TTPS certificate, so you can do uh, secure local development um, and make sure that your site works, at, works with HTTPS before you push it. Uh, we also did a lot of little quality of life improvements. So for example, we added uh, file watcher support. So if you add a file to your project that would be included by the, um, by the wildcards in the CSProj, uh, those now automatically show up. Now, one of the big features that we are announcing today is our Razor language service. Um, this is something that we ported over from, um, from VS on Windows. And we did a lot of work uh, in our text editor to make it more compatible with the same APIs to help us bring features like this, uh, like this over. So it has support for all the things that you'd expect in Razor. Um, you get IntelliSense, uh, info tool tips, um, for both the C sharp and the and the HTML in in the page, we also today shipped uh, TypeScript and JavaScript language services. So you now have um, the full range of client side web development languages. So this really rounds out our web development story. Uh, so this again is using the same TypeScript and JavaScript language service as VS on Windows. One of the other smaller features that we added is that we added the ability to specify a custom .NET Core uh, location. So if you download one of the uh, master builds from GitHub, for example, or builds .NET Core to, uh, from source, since it's uh, open source, uh, you can configure VS for Mac to use that build um, rather than just using ones installed into the global location. And in the Publishing space, uh, we have support for publishing to Azure App Service. Uh, we also have support for Docker. Um, so if you want to containerize your ASP.NET Core project, um, that's as simple as right-clicking on the project, add uh, Docker support. And when you publish a containerized project to Azure, we'll set it up with the, with the Azure Container Registry and all that. 
uh, automatically. So I'm going to show this to you quickly. I'm going to keep my demos pretty short and simple because I have a lot to get through. So this is Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, and there it is. OK, um, yes, so can, can everyone at the back uh, read that on that scale? OK, so I'm going to do a new project. And you can see here that I can create an, an ASP.NET Core app. I'm going to create a web app, which uses Razor Pages by default. If you want the older style, you can create an MVC app. I'm going to do Next. And you can see here, I now have the choice for .NET Core 2.1, because I installed the release candidate on my machine first thing this morning. So I'm going to name my project. And for some reason, I always typo project names in presentations. So here we have our project. So you can see it has all the um, razor here. And the uh, we have our razor views. We have our JavaScript and CSS. Um, and so on. And it's fully restored. So if we build, and run, this is running on .NET Core 2.1. And it opens up in Safari. And here we have an, an ASP.NET Core 2.1 app running on a Mac. And of course, you can debug it um, as well. Um, OK, so this is quite complicated. Um, my app doesn't need um, all of this overview of why you should use ASP.NET Core, because I'm using it already. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to just to add some simple text so you can see the HTML in IntelliSense in the Razor view there. And here we have our C Sharp IntelliSense with all the tooltips and so on that you would expect. And that doesn't exist, so it's squiggled. And so I'm now going to go into the page here and add a. Um, Add a property for that to fetch. And save that, build it. And when we rerun that, it reloads. And here we have our, um, oh, looks like I missed the hello. <laughs> well, now it's more like a command. <laughs> build. Everyone, go build. <laughs> anyway, so rebuild that. Um, so now I'm going to quickly show you some uh, TypeScript in action. So I'm going to add a dependency on the um, on the TypeScript build logic. So that's simply adding a NuGet uh, package to the project to the license. And now um, I'm going to add a uh, tsconfig file. Uh, we don't currently have templates for this, but it's, it's 
pretty straightforward. So I'm going to just reveal the directory in Finder, drop a tsconfig.json in there, um, and then that should show up here momentarily. Um, maybe not. Let's just reopen it. That normally fixes issues. OK, here we go. So here's our tsconfig.json. And as you can see, that's using our uh, JSON editor. It went and found the uh, schema. And so this simply uh, includes the TypeScript files from uh, a TS directory and compiles them to replace the uh, site JavaScript file that's part of this project. So I'm going to just create this uh, folder. And you can see there the, uh, ad, the uh, ad Docker support. Though I'm not going to go into this now. Um, and in here, I'm going to add a TypeScript file. Hello.ts. And now we're editing the TypeScript file. And as you can see, we have TypeScript in IntelliSense. Um, and so this is simply going to alert. And then uh, document dot. So you can see our function has showed up in the entire sense as well. And now when I build this, it's going to compile the TypeScript. And that's going to uh, replace the uh, site.ts. So this is the um, compiled TypeScript. Looks awfully similar to the source ty TypeScript, because I wasn't really using any of the TypeScript features there, because it's so simple. Um, but now when I run this, I'm going to load, and then hmm. hmm, I think I got that wrong. Let me, so I'm more of a C-sharp developer than, ty than a TypeScript developer. Um, fortunately, I had an example I prepared earlier. Ah, window.onload, not document.onload. And now it's running, and there we go. So that was some TypeScript written with TypeScript IntelliSense. So next, I'm going to talk about some of the new features we have in the mobile space for Xamarin apps. Uh, so for Xamarin iOS, we added support for the latest uh, iOS uh, 11.4 and Xcode 9.4 and all of the versions along the way to those. Uh, we also have support for debugging and deploying over Wi-Fi now using the uh, Apple uh, APIs for that, which means you can deploy to uh, Apple TVs, for example, over Wi-Fi if you're Apple TV isn't right next to your uh, Mac. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, it's also great if you're developing for uh, iPhone or iOS and you have uh, devices attached to the accessory port. Um, we, for those of you who are doing AI development, uh, we added support for CoreML models. Uh, if you add one of those to your project, uh, we can automatically generate C -sharp bindings to that model so you can use it from C -sharp. Uh, We also have a whole bunch of little quality of life Im improvements um, all throughout the iOS experience. We also added support for automatic iOS provisioning. Um, this is one of my favorite features um, because it means you no longer really have to care about the ins and outs of provisioning profiles. Um, you simply log into your app account uh, and uh, select your team. and. 
then uh, turn on automatic provisioning in your uh, info plist, and it will automatically create certificates and a provisioning profile for you and download them and set them up. And that also has support for entitlements. So if you go and change your entitlements in your entitlements.plist, it will go and update the provisioning profile to have those uh, entitlements and download the updated version. Uh, we've also made some major changes to the iOS designer. Um, it now, its layout model uh, with constraints now much more closely follows the Xcode model. Um, so as you can see here, you can uh, design a UI that um, will relay out as you, as you rotate your device or use a different screen size and so on. Um, the developer who, who, um, who developed this uh, asked me to tell you that um, there's, a, there's a sort of hidden feature. If you hold down control, the, um, the uh, handles will appear. So you don't have to just go and toggle them on and off in the toolbar. You can just hold down control and drag and connect them. It's uh, super neat, and I'd never found it if you didn't tell me. Um, so now you all know. Uh, so on the Android front, uh, we added support for the latest Android version, uh, Android Oreo, uh, the 8. 8.1 and so on. Uh, we also have an integrated SDK manager, so no longer do you, do you have to open an external app to manage your Android SDK pieces. Um, that's now integrated into preferences, and it's more aware, it, because it's not generic, it's specific to the Xamarin scenario, it's more aware of like what pieces you need for Xamarin development, so it's not going to, uh, to try and download unnecessary or out-of-date pieces. Um, we also have a whole bunch of quality of life improvements there. Um, for example, uh, we've made a lot of improvements to the uh, AXML IntelliSense. <coughs> and we also have a new Android device manager. Um, this this uh, allows you to create uh, emulators. Um, and it's a much nicer experience than the old one. Um, as you can see here, you have a nice a nice list of devices, and when you do a new device, uh, you could go and set up all the options. Uh, we're currently looking into giving you some kind of pre-built devices for common scenarios. Um, but the really neat thing is that you don't have to download images before you create your device. Um, you can just create, um, pick which image you want, and if you don't have it installed, then the uh, device manager will download that automatically for you because it works with the SDK manager. For uh, Xamarin Forms, uh, we have switched over the templates to use uh, .NET Standard now. Um, we've done a lot of work on the uh, AXML Inte IntelliSense, just to, um, on the XAML IntelliSense, just to tune that up. Um, so you can see uh, here, for example, we now have support for uh, data templates. Um, they show up both uh, from uh, XAML definitions and from C-sharp definitions. Um, there's also a whole, a whole load of updates to the um, live player. Uh, I'm not going to get into this in detail because there's a lot of other talks about all of these topics. Um, but I'll give you some, um, some, re some recommendations for other sessions at the end. So on the cloud front, we have Azure Functions. And this is something that we uh, initially previewed at Build last year. And now in 7.5, it, um, it is now part of the product by default. Um, when we previewed it, it was very much kind of a proof of concept built on, on a port of functions to the mono runtime. Um, now it is running on the Azure Functions uh, .NET Core 2 based SDK. Um, so your functions will run on the .NET Core 2 uh, runtime. Uh, that SDK is still in preview, um, but the Azure Functions tooling in VS for Mac is, is, is now stable um, and is in the stable release. So I'm just going to create a new uh, Azure function here. And 
If you've used this before, uh, one difference you might notice is that we now create a function in the project by default, um, so you don't have to go and look up what should my first function look like. Um, another thing that we've done is we've added the uh, right-click add function. So this dialog lets you pick from a range of, of of sort of standard boilerplate functions. And so I could say, for example, that I want a um, that I want an HTTP trigger with parameters, and I want it to be called hello. Um, let's check that doesn't conflict with this one. Yep. <laughs> so and that um, creates a new a new function called Hello. And so I'm going to build that and run that. Oh, that, that's weird. My Mac is doing weird things. <laughs> uh, my display is, is acting up right now. Uh, I think I can still, I'll just have to use that display instead of my display. <laughs> um, Okay, so if I go to Safari, so I have a link to this um, already. Was it running? Ah, it didn't start. There we go. So here we go. So it starts up the functions uh, runtime. You can see uh, functions uh, beginning to boot up there. Um, and now the function is available at, so there's two here. So there's, um, so going to look at uh, the um, API hello name. So I have a link to this already. So here we go. So um, so here I've opened the um, HTTP trigger function, and it wants a um, a name in the request body. Bless you. So I'm going to just go back and put a breakpoint in that function. That was the uh, HTTP trigger. And I'm going to be incredibly original, and the name is going to be build. <laughs> Again, here we go. So now um, it breaks in the breakpoint, and as you can see here, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you are, you are very correct. Uh, there we go. And I should probably resume that, and then it's going to hit again. And there we go. So we have our name. And if I resume that, we'll see that the uh, that the function um, returned hello build. So it's a very simple function. Um, just an example of of how easy it is to get started cr creating a function. Um, now, I kind of got things out of order a little bit because I forgot to tell you what functions were first. So <laughs> does everyone here know what Azure functions are? Um, OK, some people didn't nod. So the quick summary is they're a serverless architecture. So you can write a function, upload it into the cloud, and then it scales out depending on how much uh, it's being called. Um, they're super easy to connect to each other and to various Azure services like queues and blob storage and so on. And there's a very straightforward uh, C sharp programming model that you just saw. Um, but you can also use it with other languages, just not in VS for Mac. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I told you this already as well. <laughs> so, all of that stuff is new in the 7.5 preview, which you can download today. So next, I'm going to take a quick look at the core features that all these workloads share um, and, and the C-sharp productivity features. So we've heard from a lot of you that um, performance and reliability are, are something that is important to you. And so we've been doing a lot of work on this. Um, in terms of performance, we've been focusing on things like startup time, on solution load time, on uh, IntelliSense and editor responsiveness um, to try and make sure that it pops up quickly, that it doesn't stall. 
um, also reducing memory use to reduce GC hangs, um, and even down to things like concurrent uh, execution of Roslyn analyzers, which makes results come back um, faster. Uh, so this is something uh, we have a lot of improvements in the 7.5 release, um, more coming up in 7.6. Uh, we also have developer community report a problem, uh, which you can get to from help report a problem. And so if you run into any issues uh, that you um, that are causing you problems, um, please tell them. Uh, please tell us about them. You, if even if someone else has reported the issue, issue, you can go and vote it up to help us prioritize them. Um, because even when we test things, we don't necessarily have the same environments that you do, or our projects aren't necessarily doing the same things. So that feedback is super important to us. And thank you very much to everyone who has who has reported issues there. Um, so here's. Here's a chart showing some of the uh, performance improvements that we made. Um, so going from 7.4 to 7.5, uh, we cut start startup time to half what it was. And in 7.6 preview one, it's even a little lower. We've also made uh, improvements on solution load. And we have some more improvements on both of these uh, coming up. Now, Visual Studio for Mac is based on the same foundation, uh, foundational components as a lot of um, as Visual Stu Studio is on Windows. Um, so it's built on Roslyn for C Sharp, IntelliSense, and refactorings and uh, and analyzers and so on. It's also it also shares a lot of the same editor. APIs now, so that's enabled us to bring over the uh, TypeScript and JavaScript and Razor and CSS and, and HTML and so on by working with the VS editor team to bring those uh, APIs over so the extensions could be ported from the Windows version. Um, it's built on MS Build. Um, the debugger that you just saw for .NET Core uses the VS Code debugger protocol. Um, you can use TextMate for syntax highlighting. There's a whole bunch of shared components um, that enable us to uh, deliver features on Mac uh, more easily. And so this is something that we, we've been working on a lot. Um, it's not super visible because it's not something you see directly. Um, but this is what's enabled us to, to bring things like um, Razor and TypeScript uh, to you. Um, the core is actually open source. Uh, it's an open source project on GitHub called Monodevelop, and uh, contributions are welcome. Or you can just check it out, read the source code if you're interested. There have been a lot of improvements to C Sharp productivity over the past year based on all of the uh, updates that we have from um, Roslyn. So as we've pulled in new Roslyn features, um, we've gained new analyzers, new refactorings, new fixes, um, support for C Sharp 7.1, C Sharp 7.2. Um, and kind of going back to the foundations, um, we've made a lot, we've done a lot of in internal work to enable us to use some of the higher level Roslyn features that we previously weren't using, um, which is going to enable those higher level features to come over faster as well. And one tiny little thing that's near and dear to my heart is that in 7.6, we've turned code folding on by default. Um, it's kind of small, but um, we've had that for a long time. But a lot of folks weren't actually aware it was there because it was uh, in preferences. Um, so we've done some, um, we've overhauled the visual uh, look and feel a, li a little bit, and it's now turned on by default. This is probably my favorite new feature of this release, though. We have editor config support. Um, so uh, the summary of, ed of editor config is it enables you to define your code style um, in a file in the root of your project or uh, various subdirectories. Um, and that means that anyone working on your project gets the same code style. So if you're working on a team or open source, um, it makes sure that you have consistent style, consistent formatting. Um, you can even, um, Roslyn has extended the editor config format uh, by also allowing you to define 
um, things like where the system directives should be sorted first when you're um, when you sort usings or how you or your formatting like um, whether you want to space between your method name and declaration um, here um, and you can also control some of the analyzers as as well like uh, this one uh, on the screen here is C sharp style pattern matching over is with cast check and that's basically if you're using the older style of doing a is foo type bar then cast it you you can just do the as um, oh, do the is pattern matching so is foo foo or whatever um, and you can you you can turn these on in your et, in your editor config so if you have strict rules about like whether you should be using the newer style on your project you can make sure everyone on the team has those turned on um, and you can control whether they're highlighted as suggestions or errors um, and there's literally a, uh, probably a hundred of these um, so it's very fine-grained and so next I'm going to show you a few of these things So this is the preview release here, and um, you can see here our, be our beautiful new co code folding. It looks like VS Code. It only appears um, when you're near it, unless things are folded. Um, so here is a C-sharp file in one of my own projects, which is an MS Build IntelliSense extension that you can download from the extension gallery. Um, so, as you can see here, the analyzers aren't really showing much. Um, they're suggesting that, so I have a to-do here, and it's also suggesting that I can convert this to a static method call, so I'm just going to alt-enter, um, oh, no, to an extension method call, so alt-enter to fix that. So that's simplified that a, li a little bit. Um, and of course, there's a whole bunch of uh, other, 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 other refactorings here as well. Like you know, Alt Enter um, is the way to get to those. So I can say, uh, move this to its own file, um, or I can copy the comments from the base class. There's literally a couple of hundred um, analyzers and fixes here. Um, it doesn't necessarily always tell you when they're available because we don't have the the light bulb experience. So um, just try it. Um, use Alt Enter and see what and see what shows up. Um, if you're interested in seeing like the full list of what is available, uh, you can go into Preferences, and here in the Source Analysis, we have a list of so. Here's all of the refactorings, and here's all of the. Um, analyzers. So there's a whole bunch of them. And you can turn them on and off if there are some that you don't like. And a lot of them are off by default because they're ones that might be somewhat contentious. Uh, yeah, so this project actually has an editor config. So this is fairly long. Um, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that I only want to use var when the type is apparent. So, cur so currently I have it set up to prefer var for, um, for all types. But um, I'm going to turn it on only for when it's apparent. And so now, when I uh, go back to that file, it'll take just a second for the analyzer results to show up. Ah, okay. So because these are only suggestions, um, they're not actually uh, they're not actually showing up in the. Um, okay, that's that's odd. That might that might be a bug. Uh, but you 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 can see the. Tooltip here. If the squiggle were showing up, it's clearly there. 
Um, so it's saying that this one is, is wrong because it's not a parent. Like, what, what is a type of parent? So if I alt enter this, I can actually fix it. So use explicit type instead of var. Um, I zoom out a bit so you can see the preview. You can see what change it's going to make. Turns out that the parent is an expression node. And I can actually also fix all and change all of them. It takes a second. There we go. So now it's turned a whole, lo whole load of my vars into uh, ex explicit types. So now the style of my file um, matches matches the uh, style that we specified in the editor config. And so these are respected by um, by VS for, for Mac, by VS, by VS Code. So anyone using any of those e editors will get the uh, the same settings. Um, you you can also control the formatting, so the method name between the um, so the space between the method declaration name and the open parenthesis, which is quite a mouthful. I'm glad I didn't have to type that out. Um, so currently, you have to uh, close and reload the file for the updated settings to take effect. Um, but now, if I if I format um, the, the code, which is um, command I. You can see that it changed all of these to no longer have that, to no longer have those spaces. So if I command Z, command Shift Z, you can see the change that the formatter made. Um, so this is one of my favorite features because I work on a lot of open source, and it's really frustrating when I see pull requests from folks who didn't, who weren't aware of what the code style was, and 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 then you have to go and ask them nicely to fix it. Um, So one more thing before I finish. Today, we announced uh, Team Foundation version control support. Um, <laughs> this is currently in preview. Uh, you can download it today from the extension gallery. Um, it has all of the core version control operations that you'd expect from uh, Team Foundation uh, version control. Um, you can like map things into workspaces and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, so this was one of the top requested features on our user voice, the second top. Um, and so that's why we built it, because uh, you asked us for it. So please tell us th about the features that, that we don't have that you want, um, because it does make a difference. Um, yeah, so um, please download it and try it out if, if TFVC is something that, that you use. And we would love to know what you think of it, um, so we can make sure that it's a really great experience. So I'm going to finish up with a bunch of uh, resource links. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can download it from ak.ms forward slash vsmac. There's also the docs are really great. Our docs team has done a fantastic job of, 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 uh, of all of the conceptual docs about using the various features and so on. Um, you can also report a problem or make a suggestion. And you can also get to those from the help menu. Uh, if you tweet, we have a hashtag, hashtag vs4mac. Or you can tweet at Visual Studio, uh, or you can tweet at me, uh, at MJ Hutchinson. Um, uh, I do answer questions. So if you're just wondering if there's a, be a better way to do something, or whether a feature is there or not, um, or have some feedback about a crash or something, um, Twitter isn't necessarily the best medium for reporting crashes. But um, I will do my best to answer um, anything that folks tweet at me. And I touched on a lot of things very briefly, um, but there's a lot more great sessions covering them in more depth. Um, so it's a quick list here if folks want to take a photograph of that. Um, these are also all recorded. I know a couple of them happened already. Um, but if you didn't see those, you can go and watch them online. Or if you're watching this online, you can go watch them online. Um, one of those, though, uh, the, there is a tips and tricks talk. Um, 
in a theater session on Wednesday at 2, which I very much recommend because there's a lot of awesome features that, that you kind of have to know they're there to, to use them or like easy, easier ways to do things and so on. So I recommend checking that theater session out. And finally, uh, complete your evaluations. And we have, uh, we have prizes every day. So I have about five minutes left. So does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, could you please go to the microphone so folks who uh, watch this online? Okay. Sure. So um, one problem that we've had with uh, Visual Studio for Mac is support for corporate proxies defined in a PAC file. Mm -hmm. Has any work been done towards that? Um, yes. So support for corporate proxies that use a PAC file. Um, yeah, so the, the network stack that we use um, doesn't have great support for proxies. There's also like cor corporate proxies tend to have like a whole bunch of different gotchas and it's really hard to replicate them. Um, but we've been switching various pieces of the code base over to use um, NSL connection. So um, that will have the exact same proxy support as, as Mac OS itself um, rather than the um, proxy support in the mono runtimes uh, stack. Um, so it's kind of an incremental process. So if there are specific features that, that are really problematic, um, please let us know about those so we can switch those over. Um, anyone else have questions? Yeah. Uh, feel free to go up to the mics preemptively. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you showed different templates of the Azure functions. Uh -huh. Uh, can you put a customized templates there, which are for my company, you know, my company, my organization? Okay, uh, different templates for Azure Functions, um, and whether you can do custom templates. Um, so yes, you can create your own templates. Um, currently, we only support um, extensions adding um, project templates. Not um, well, you can add item templates. It's a little more complicated. Um, but yeah, so you can create extensions. If you go to um, the extension gallery, there's an extension that you can use to write extensions. And so you can package templates inside an extension. And those templates use the exact same templating engine as .NET new use, uses. So you, you can share them with that and with VS on Windows as well. Um, if you um, email me or message me on Twitter, I'm happy to provide more uh, links to specific resources for template creation. Question? What was that? Sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, is there plans to bring the Visual Studio live sharing to VS for Mac and, and vice versa, like between Mac to Mac and Windows to Mac and all, such? So the question was about Visual Studio Live Share. Um, so that is something that we would very much like to do. Um, we don't have a specific time frame that we're planning on doing that. Um, there is, I have been told, a GitHub repository for Live Share issues where you can upvote various things. And VS for Mac is listed in there. So if you go vote it up there, um, that will help like increase the pri priority so it's likely to happen sooner. This question might be pretty dated, but uh, a year or so back, I did a large project with Zamarin Studio. Um, should we be getting switching over to uh, Visual Studio for Mac now? I've just been buried in Zamarin Studio, and I haven't looked at it yet. So the question is whether to switch from Zamarin Stu Studio to Visual Studio for Mac. And the answer is yes. Um, VS for Mac completely replaces Xamarin Stu Studio. It it has all the same features and a lot more. Um, and it's, it's completely compatible. So I recommend making the upgrade as soon as possible. OK, great. Thank you all for coming.